in addition to the spot healing brush and the normal healing brush, there is also one of my favorite photo retouching tools, which is called the patch tool. In any photo retouching job, I typically go to my patch tool first. It's one of the easiest ones to use. So to show you how that works, you go to open. I will come down to chapter nine, folder 9.6, and I'm gonna open up this picture of a distant relative of mine. Typical vintage quality photos. They've got a lot of damage, a lot of wrinkles, a lot of little water stains and spots. There's a big stain right there. Dark stains here. Little spots all over the place on this vintage photo, but I want to clean it up. Okay, luckily, most of the damage is on the area behind this figure. So what I'm going to do, as always, is Command J, and then I'm going to zoom in on this real dark spot right here. Okay. If I go to the fourth tool down on the right, I'm going to press and hold and go to my patch tool. And all you have to do is click and drag around that little damage spot, like taking a patch out of the wall. Then you go inside the selection and drag it to a clean part of the wall. The colors don't even have to match. Like notice the difference in the values there. But when I let go of my mouse, it will not only patch in the detail, it will patch in the surrounding value as well. This is almost like photo retouching with your eyes closed. Okay, the only thing that the patch tool does not work on is when damage is right on the physical edge of the object. So this little water stain that looks like it's coming out from behind his shoulder, I would never use the patch tool there. Okay, I'll save that for later. Same thing over here. You got another spot right on the physical edge of his shoulder. The patch tool will not work. You can see this dark spot right here next to his ear. So just to show you, if I went around like this over the edge of his ear, a physical edge, and then I drag that out, it's going to damage the photo even more. Like a big gust of wind just blasted through his head. It ruined and destroyed his ear. So I've got even more damage to contend with. So I don't want to use the patch tool on hard physical edges. So I'm going to go to edit and undo. I'm going to edit, undo again. There we go. Command D to deselect. And I'm just going to patch this in like any normal photo retouching job. So I'm going to take little spots, drag them over, drag it over, drag that dark spot, and then that dark spot. Then I've got a larger spot, but I've also got a large wall to drag it to. Now we'll drag a couple of these spots over, take this spot over, this spot these spots right here and I keep going spot by spot by spot by spot and as I do that I'm getting a larger and larger area of a clean wall so I can keep going over these little spots and dragging them then I'll go over this bright spot and drag it then I'll go next to the ear like that I just won't cross over the ear and I'll drag that down. Now I got a pretty good chunk of a clean wall. So now I can go bigger and bigger selections right here because I've got a bigger and bigger clean wall to drag that to. There's a big chunk and I'll drag it down. There is a dark spot and I'll drag it down. There's a crease or a scratch and I'll drag that down. Here's a couple of spots. There's a bright spot. So as you are doing this, you're gonna get exponentially faster and faster because you have bigger and bigger clean areas to drag these selections to. So I can keep going up and over his head, select, drag, select, drag. See that little spot right there? Okay, select that stain, drag it over. Now I select part of that crease, drag it over. 
Now I select the other half of that crease, drag it up, drag it up. Now I drag that whole corner down, drag these little spots, kind of start moving those around just to clean up the wall. Take these spots and drag them up. And I'm going to keep doing that. I can go faster and faster, bigger, cleaner walls to drag this to. There's a huge water stain right there, but I got a huge clean wall to drag it to. And we'll just keep doing these until it looks pretty darn smooth here for the most part. There we go. Now let's take a look at that. So I'll zoom out. And that wall here's before and there's after before and after and that was in the space of a minute or two okay when it comes to damage like damage on the shoulder the only thing that will work on a physical edge is your clone stamp now I want to show you one thing this is a common mistake that people make if you're using your patch tool and you make a selection and then you drag it down if you do not turn off that selection, you won't be able to do anything else. Okay, notice if I switch to my patch tool or my uh, clone stamp. And I'll come down here. I'll just show you on his eye. Option click the eye. Now when I click and drag the paint, nothing is going to happen. And that is because in Photoshop, you are only allowed to work inside of a selection. So a common error that people make is they go with their patch tool like this, they drag it, and then they leave that selected. Okay, you cannot leave it selected. So if I am on my patch tool and I decide to switch to another tool, like my clone stamp, I'm gonna automatically, in my brain, think command D. Just make sure I deselect, even if I don't see the selection on my screen. Okay. I always tell my students, if you go to use a tool and it, for some reason, it looks like it doesn't work. You try to clone and it's not cloning. You probably have a selection on your screen. Even if you don't see it, you probably have something by accident. So whenever I go to use a tool and it doesn't work, I think, whoa, Command D, deselect something that was on the screen and 90% of the time that will take care of the problem. Okay, so now I can zoom in, no selections, Command D. Now I go to the clone stamp, I'll hold Control and Option and go with a smaller brush. Option click the physical edge of the shoulder. Now I let go of the mouse and the option key and I move the preview to line it up and I paint out the damage right there. Okay, physical edges, you want your clone stamp. I'll option click the shoulder there, line it up, paint half of that spot. Option click the shoulder again, line it up and paint out the other half of that spot. That looks pretty good. There's a little dark spot right underneath his ear. So I'm going to take my patch tool, go next to his head, not overlapping his head. We'll get rid of that little spot. There you go. Now I can take these little spots. And what's great, again, about the patch tool is even though this is on his jacket, I can drag it to the wall. It doesn't matter. It will take it out. That's what I love about the patch tool. It's so easy to use. They've almost made photo retouching kind of brainless, um, which is a good thing for some artists. It's also kind of sucks because if your customers see how easy this is, they're going to ask you, why'd you charge me so much money if it's so darn easy? And my response to any customer who says something like that to me is I immediately defend my actions. If they say, wait, why'd you charge me so much? It's so easy to do. I tell them, go ahead and have a seat. Show me how easy this is. If it's so easy, do it yourself. They go, well, well, uh, well, no, I don't know how to do it. And I go, well, then it's not as easy as you think. Okay, it took me years of school to make it look easy. But if I sit you down, put the mouse in your hand and say, go to it, if it's so easy, 
you're going to find out it's not as easy as you say. So <laughs> don't open your mouth. Um, you don't say that to a customer, but I'm thinking it. If it's so easy, prove it. Do it yourself. Okay? It's not. It takes some training. So right here, when I have a crease going across the edge of a physical edge, I'm going to switch back to my clone stamp. Option click, recreate that physical edge right there. Then I can come back to my patch tool, take a little crease out of these wrinkles right here. Take all these creases and move them up. Smooth out the jacket a little bit right in there. Okay, that looks good. Uh, we'll come over to this dark stain and just move it. There's a couple other dark stains right here. This big yellow stain right there, I'll just drag it up to the wall. Doesn't matter, patches it in. I love the patch tool. Okay, now I'm gonna keep going. Just add a few more spots here. Um, let's take a couple of those and drag them down. Take that bright one and drag it up. Click and drag little tiny areas like this just to touch them up. Okay, and we've got a big kind of water spot right in here. And that's also over the physical edge of these folds. So I'm going to go back to my clone stamp. And I'm going to physically clone the folds. So I'm going to option click right here and then paint more of that fold right there. Option click out here, paint it up into there. Option click above and paint out that little shadow. Option click, paint. Option click, paint. Option click paint, option click paint, option click paint, little tiny bits at a time. Option click paint, option click paint, option click paint, option click paint, option click paint. And we'll get this other shadow right here. So option click paint, option click below, paint above. We can kind of recreate that shadow edge right there. Option click and paint right down there. Option click and paint. And this guy is looking pretty clean there. Here's before and there's after. Okay, the only other thing I want to do is a little bit of color editing. You know, hopefully you've understand through these tutorials that photo retouching is not just your clone stamp. That's like the last thing on earth I use. That's the hardest one to use. Okay, it's also the first one that came out in terms of photo retouching with Photoshop, but it's also consistently been the hardest one to use. So photo retouching is spot healing for tiny little areas, healing brush for larger areas, patch tool for large flat areas, more like the wall and the coat, uh, red eye retouching, and then you get to the cloning for edge details. And then on top of all of that, you do color editing. So this photo, I want it to have that more natural, organic look. Old photos like this, old vintage photos, they do not age and turn yellow. This looks like it's from an old newspaper that's been sitting out in the sun for weeks. Old newspapers turn dingy and yellow. Old photos do not. They turn brown. They turn sepia. Okay, so in order to make this a uh, more vintage, authentic looking vintage photo, you would think you just turn it into a black and white, but that's the worst thing to do. Okay, a lot of people make the mistake by going to image menu, adjustments, black and white, and that just pulls all the life right out of your photo. That is too dull. It doesn't turn sepia. It turns metallic gray. Metal is a soulless, lifeless material. I want this guy to have an authentic look. Dull gray is not authentic. Photos do not turn dull and gray like that. So I'll click cancel. What I do instead to give my photos as much of an authentic look is I go to Image Menu, Adjustments, Hue, and Saturation. Okay, the default button right down here is Colorize in the bottom right. So when I activate that, it's going to turn red. That is the default. Okay, old photos don't turn red either. So I'm going to take my hue slider and just slide it a little bit to the right. 
till I get kind of a brownish orange right there or brownish red. Okay, then I take the saturation. You can see if you go to the right, this is the color that I've kind of tweaked it to, but I don't want to pull the saturation all the way out. Again, you get that dull, lifeless, metallic gray. You take this and you slide it back until you get a more natural sepia tone look like that. Here's before, here's after. This is what traditional vintage photos fade to. They fade to this sepia tone, this dull brownish tint. Okay, so I turn it to a reddish brown and I desaturate just to the point where I have that authentic look and I click OK. Here's before and here's after. Before and after. Okay, the only other thing I want to do to this, since this is an old relative, let's say to honor him, he came from the farm in Missouri and he loved his tie. They didn't have a lot of money, but boy, he loved that red tie. Well, we don't know it's red. Okay, this is an old black and white photo or a sepia tone photo. I want to color tint the tie. That was his prized possession. Okay, they rented the suit, but he owned that tie. We want to show grandpa loved his tie. So I want to color tint this like I did with the Lucy doll that I showed you before. If I want to add a red tint to the tie, I create a blank layer. I will double click the name and call that red tie. Hit return. That will accept the name. I'll come to my foreground color and pick a shade of red. And then with my paintbrush, I'm going to hold control and option and go down for a harder brush to the left for a smaller brush. And I'm going to set the layers blending mode from normal paint down to overlay before I even start painting. That way, when I do paint like this, I can start to see the detail as I go. So to compensate, I'm going to make sure I go over the edges. I want to absolutely make sure I cover every little square inch of this tie, like paint it right up into the collar. So grandma is like, why do you have all this lipstick on your collar kind of thing? But I paint it over the edges. Then I'm going to tone down the opacity, make it kind of blend back into that photo right there. I'll set mine to about 30%. Now I've got all these staining on his jacket and his shirt and his collar, so I create a layer mask. Anytime you add a layer mask, you're going to hit D for default colors, X to switch to black, and now when I paint with black, I can scrape off the paint from applying to his shirt, scrape off the paint from applying right in here. I'll paint out the paint from his collar don't want it sticking to his collar and we'll scrape that paint off of his collar right there take it out of some of the uh, shadow right there if I go too far into it like that X for white and I put the paint back on X for black and then I can continue to erase around the edges here erase it off the edge of his jacket right down into there and this is going to look nice and sharp for grandpa. There we go. Nice color tinted image. I can drag the opacity back up. Let's say we bring it to 40. Just so it stands out a little more. But now I got a nice, clean, vintage looking, hand tinted photo. That's what I want you to do for my gramps here. And show me you understand the process. When you're done, by the way, when you're done, you can save this as last name, first name, Gramps. So I can see what you've learned here in Photoshop.